you can relax. I'm not going to ask you any questions because I know to a degree you can't answer them and to a degree you won't answer them. <laughs> My name is Skip Husking. I, uh, I live at 65 Andover Terrace and I will try to keep this to right to the two minutes. Yogi Berra said it best, deja vu all over again. Several years ago, Glenn Rock was involved in a costly legal suit, legal battle involving a sexual harassment charge in the police department. It was not only handled extremely unprofessionally, it cost the taxpayer, taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. When I expressed this concern in the Gazette and I came down here and talked about it, I was told, you don't know the facts, we can't tell you the facts, and you're wrong about the money. How do I know I was right? Two reasons. Number one, re with regard to knowing the facts, I went to Hackensack and sat down and listened at the court case. I physically attended it. I was appalled when the judge stated that this case should have never come to trial. It was a waste of time. It should have been resolved at a much lower level. Despite losing, the town appealed the case and for all practical purposes, lost again, spending even more tax dollars. With regard to the real costs, I filed the Oprah Freedom of Information Act, and I actually received many of the bills, not all of them, and I found it was way farther than what I had estimated and was told that I was way out of line. This lesson clearly taught me that what I read in the press or I hear at the open meetings is often very, very, very far from the truth. I don't know the specific details in these cases, but I have this fear, Glen Rock is doing the exact same thing it did last time, stumbling through costly litigation. We should have reasonable transparency. Last Sunday's Bergen record, the headline stated, Palisades cop accused of theft. In the article, the chief was quoted as saying, you are entitled to the charge, you are not entitled to the confidential information. And I agree with that. For almost two decades, I have lived in Glenrock. I have been a strong supporter of our police department. In all my contacts from the officers on the streets up to and including Captain Miller and Chief Stamen, they have always acted professionally and courteously. That includes the offers, the officers rumored to be on the firing block. I have de deep respect for the, for, for the police force and I will continually support them in keeping us safe. Please handle this fairly, professionally, and with reasonable transparency. That's why we voted you in. Skip Husking, uh, Andover Terrace. I'll try to keep it to uh, the two or three minutes, and uh, don't worry, I'm not going to uh, just rehash everything I said last week, but I do have some comments, and I know you're not going to comment on them, um, which I don't fully agree with, and I'll, I'll explain why. I'm not here to rehash what I said two weeks ago. I'm here to offer my opinion on how to get out in front of this by exercising leadership and open and honest communications to your constituency. I can't imagine that the public outcry that you saw two weeks ago, you can't take an inward look as to what is going on and what you need to do to take care of it. I do believe you can recapture some of the respect and confidence by the people if you demonstrate open, honest, and careful communication. Ten years ago, when I was here raising the same complaints about how the past legal suit was handled, there was no social media, so I was here kind of like a... Uh, a voice in the wind. And it is amazing how the social media has created what a, a difference for the people in this town. And I think it's, it's overly, in a, in a general way, it's good. But there are some negatives to it. In the past two weeks, I've been inundated with phone calls, Facebook messages, emails, and requests to meet. While I believe today's technology is good for people to have a quicker and more specific, locally focused, focused communications, it comes with some negatives. Namely, mean-spirited comments and calls to immediately fire and get rid of the Glen Rock complete police who have 10 to 30 years of good service. 
Just like I believe the two officers should be treated fairly, I believe the chief, the captain, and the IA office should be treated fairly also. But what you see on going on in the, uh, in the public media is, t is terrible and it's tearing this place town, uh, apart. I remember when uh, Art said during the Faber Field thing, he devoted he, against because he saw what was going on and, and he didn't want, I had no comprehension that this kind of thing would, would happen here. In the, in, we don't need, yes. it's not my phone. It's mine. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. That was, oh, that's that was my time. But that's her. Oh, yeah. You know, don't worry. I'm not going to yell and scream or anything. I just I've got some things to say here that uh, I think are important. I believe the two officers should be treated fairly. So should the captain and the IA officer. The last thing we need is a, is a search for scapegoats and for sacrificial lambs, and that's what I see starting to happen here. I've been around a long time, and I can honestly say I don't believe everyone involved is 100% squeaky clean. The world doesn't work like that. Unless there is some egregious act by any one of them, this got way out of hand, and now is the time for you to exercise leadership in getting it under control. Those of you who know me and have heard me before, I'm just not one to come in and say, here's a big problem, and then walk away. I've got some suggestions for a solution. I've heard from many, and some that are very tuned in, that there are talks planned to seek a reasonable compromise on the suspension and pay issue. And I believe that's a very good thing. Believing that these talks are going forward, I pulled the letter, I didn't write letters to the Gazette, and I pulled my Oprah request because I believe continuing on with that is like yelling fire <coughs> in a smoky theater and it doesn't do this town any good. I've lived in the town two decades and I've watched a lot happen. There are personality issues and differences of opinion among the players. They span many, many years, and quite frankly, they got out of hand and they've reached a boiling point. The recent sexual harassment lawsuit, in my view, was the straw that broke the camel's back, creating a, 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 creating a situation of fear, revenge, poor judgment, knee-jerk actions, and knee-jerk reactions. The public are not idiots. They understand how lawsuits have skyrocketed, <coughs> leading to significant payouts and fear when they hear about them. Putting this all in perspective and recognizing we are going down a very, very costly path, and what would I do if I was the council? I would say the following to the public. That's four Want me out of here? I'll give That's you 30 minutes. seconds. Okay. This is what I, I would say if I was you. The council recognizes there are complex issues. If I was at the, uh, opera, or at the uh, uh, Oscars, I'd be hearing music now, right now, I guess. <laughs> the council recognizes there are complex personal issues involved, many of which have been brewing for years. We have learned a lot from the 2006 sexual harassment lawsuit, and we want to exercise zero tolerance for any person or group not abiding by the spirit and intent of that law. When the recent lawsuit was filed, it created much concern and activity to address some of the alleged complaints against and within the department. The council should have been more involved, exercising its responsibility and accountability. And again, this is what I would be saying if I was there. That was your 30. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Skip Husking, 65 Andover Terrace, Glenrock. Um, I'm going to take part of my five minutes just to thank Andrew. I teach at Bergen Community College, and sometimes I get very cynical about what the students are today. And it's so nice to see somebody come and pay it forward by doing the right thing without being asked. I will give you my card, and I'll tell you where I live, so my, next time it snows. <laughs> You're in for it now, Thank Andrew. you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, I would have been here two weeks ago, um, but I, we had some problems in the family. I, you know me, I speak my mind, and uh, I put my money where my mouth is. I want to commend you uh, for doing the right thing on bringing the two uh, gentlemen back, by pay I'm not bringing them back, but by doing the right thing and paying them while this is all uh, going on. I think that absolutely was the right thing to do, and I commend you on it. 
Um, I would have been here and said it personally, but I did put it in writing to, to the Glen Rock Gazette and said the same thing. And I think you're rebuilding some trust, and I have a suggestion on what to do now and how to go forward, because I think you want to rebuild that trust. And I said some of it in, in, the, uh, in the letter, and it, and it basically says five steps. Get involved and make this process go quickly. It is a process, like you said. Make it go quickly. We're spending probably 50 grand on just paying their salaries and paying the overtime every month that this thing drags on. And that's just my estimate, but it's probably not too far off. Number two, if it turns out that the issue is steeped in a history of personality conflicts brewing for years and finally coming to a head when the recent sexual harassment suit was filed, then nip this in the bud now. Don't let it drag on. It'll ruin the long-term careers of several of the individuals involved. So get involved and take care of it now. You have the opportunity to do that. Three, own up to the fact that mistakes were made by all sides, mayor and council, and many of the individuals that were involved. And set the appropriate punishment and suspensions or whatever it need be to get this thing out of the way and set it and get this, th these issues out of the way now. Then for the future, set in motion the policies and procedures to make sure it doesn't happen again. I was here 10 years ago and I asked the same thing. And, you know, and now we're back to the same thing. Make sure it doesn't happen again. And then until trust, respect, integrity, and cooperation is restored within the organization, charge the Public Safety Committee from the Council to enforce those policies and procedures by getting involved with significant personnel issues. I believe that is ultimately your responsibility. It's kind of like what Harry Truman said and had on his desk. The buck stops here. It does stop there. And that's my opinion and a lot of people here. So I, I do commend you for taking the first step and I would hope you would do get involved. Now I understand there have been two, um, two sessions and that uh, I have a question. Has there been any offer of, uh, of um, by the other side to what they would accept and whether they would be willing to sign any waivers or for future law cases, law, lawsuits or anything? I'd love to be able to comment on that, but I can't. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Skip Husking, 65 Andover Terrace, Glenrock. Um, I was here two weeks ago to commend the council, and I'm here again tonight to commend you for doing the right thing here. You stopped the hemorrhaging by doing the right thing, and now comes the most important action. What do you put in place to make sure that this doesn't happen again? I pointed this out 10 years ago, and even it's even more important now. And I firmly believe it's not finding a scapegoat to blame it on. Glenrock needs a long-term solution targeted at addressing the key critical fundamental issues that led to this. Whenever I speak or I write to the council, I try to offer suggestions for compromise and solutions and tonight, and not to complain, and tonight's no different. When I was here two weeks ago, I offered two things. After I said, please nip it in the bud, which you did do, and I commend you again on that. Sp one item, set in motion the policies and procedures to make sure that this does not happen again. Number two, until trust, respect, integrity, and cooperation is restored within the organization, charge the appropriate council committee to enforce these policies and procedures by getting involved. <coughs> getting involved with significant personnel issues or dissensions before, and I underline before, they boil over and become divisive, costly events that we've experienced over the last several months. To put it in perspective, what, what does it mean and what does it cost not to fix these things? If you look at the 2015 budget, it calls for us an expenditure increase of about $287,000. The final cost for these two cases will most certainly exceed that. During the suspension, the officer's salaries and benefits alone are approximately $25,000 a month. 
So you spread that over three months, and that's 75,000. They were covered by overtime by other officers. So even being conservative, you could say that same amount. So just the cost of the salaries and the overtime would be in the neighborhood of $150,000. That doesn't add the expenses for the lawyers, for the investigations, for the hearing officers, and all the other stuff that was involved. You put those together, I wouldn't be surprised if it totals up the entire tax increase for 2015. That's why I'm so passionate about it, and I come here and speak about it. I implore you to take the motion, the necessary actions to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And to the two officers, I offer the following, and I know only one is here, and I hope they consider carefully what I'm about to say. I have said it many times, no one is squeaky clean in this whole thing. No one is squeaky clean. However, it should have never gotten to this point, and you were done a disservice. As you've seen from the outpouring over the past three months, the Glenrock citizens, along with your fellow officers, came out to support you in getting the facts. Now that you're returning to your post, providing for our safety, I would hope you both will help, be part, help being part of the long-term solution, not only in the healing aspects, but the actions necessary to make sure that these things don't happen again. Part of this approach is not to seek revenge or retribution. That only leads to the same things that happened to you. Please consider all the taxpayers of Glenrock, many who came out in, your support, in support of you. Please discontinue the lawsuits, help end the divisiveness, and start a process based on mutual respect and support one that builds rather than destroys. Thank you.